Hello, fabulous Swiss. You are highly welcome to another insightful tutorial on this beautiful channel, So with La Perry. Today, I shall be showing you guys how I went about the making of this my black ruffle top that you see me wearing here. I was actually inspired by this particular picture. And as you can see, she's wearing hers on a pair of pant trousers while I'm wearing mine on a skirt. Either way, I think the top is just good to go. By the way, have you seen my tutorial on the making of this stylish trouser pants? If you haven't, I shall be putting the link in the description box below for you to watch. So back to the business of today. Let's get right into the tutorial. These are the two fabrics I intended to use. I've got two years of two net fabric here, which I use for the ruffles. While this is satin, duchess, one side of it is glossy, while the other side is dull. This is also about two years, but it has some dents. So while trying to avoid the dents, I had to use chiffon fabric for the back piece. So eventually I use three fabrics. So these are my basic bodies blocks, the back block and the front block, which are drafted in line with the Lapre's method of drafting basic bodies. I've got the video on this channel. The link shall be provided in the description box for you to watch. So the first thing we'll do will be to align both front block and back block together at the shoulder line. And I shall be doing a back neck dip. I just want to widen the neckline. Go down half inch for the back neck dip. And for the width now, for both front and back, I also do half an inch. Then I'll go ahead to connect like so. So for the front neck dip, I'll pick it from the shoulder line this way. And I'll be coming down seven inches thereabouts for the neck dip. And afterwards, I went ahead to draw my V neck star line then i cut off the neckline this way and with this we are simply done with the alteration for the blocks so for the back block i shall still be making use of my waist that so as to make the garment to lay very well at the back while the waist shaping and the center back tightening shall be disregarded for the front block I shall be making use of my boss that the side that this way, while the waist shaping and the waist that shall be disregarded. Only the boss that shall be made use of. So afterwards, now I shall go ahead now to place on fabric. I had to check for my green line. The fabric stretches a bit, so haven't identified the best green line. I went ahead now to place. The front block on it, added the necessary sewing allowances, and see me here notching for the dart provision, the boss dart provision, like so. Afterwards, I went ahead to cut a facing since the top will not have lining, so the facing will stop somewhere thereabouts below the chest region. So I went ahead to cut it this way. So here's the face in cut out, like so. So for the back block, like I said, I had to use chiffon fabric. So because chiffon is a bit transparent, so I had to cut two pieces of the back so that it will not be that transparent. So this is our back block cut out. So the next thing I did was to measure the armhole circumference of the back block. I also went ahead to measure that of the front so as to cut my sleeve. I chose to cut the sleeve freehand, not with pattern method. So I folded based on the round sleeve measurement. Then I went ahead to add sewing allowances to it this way. So for the sleeve crown, I came down with about four inches thereabout, drew the armor curve. Then I went ahead to cross check if it will tally with what I already have on the bodies. So afterwards, I cut out this way. So having cut out now, I had to spread open the sleeve this way, then trim inward one side of the arm hole for it to actually go inward, and this will be for the front piece. So to indicate it, I had to notch it this way, so that when I'm attaching it, 
that portion will fall to the front piece. So the next thing was to fold back the sleeve into two. They went to the hemline and trying to locate midpoint, having folded like so. And this is to actually introduce the vent where we shall be having an opening for us to attach the sleeve curve. Note that at this point, I'd already reduced the sleeve length by four inches, which is actually my sleeve curve. Do you understand? So this is what we have. So having done this, now I went to ahead to use that piece to cut the other piece of the sleeve and also make sure I notch and I created the vent this way, making sure it's pairable. So to commence sewing, I started with the back piece, lay together the two chiffon fabrics, stitched the neckline, gave it some notchings, and I went ahead to understitch. I did the same thing for the hemline this way. So here we are, I'm done with the neckline and the hemline, and this is what we have. Still leaving out the sides and the armhole region. So I went ahead to put it on fold this way, so as to mark the darts. So I had to place the back block again on it this way to get the markings done properly. So having done the marking, I now went ahead to construct the darts as shown this way. So for the front piece, I did the same, use the pattern to mark the width and length of the bust darts appropriately. And for the facing, I'd already gone ahead to fuse on it interfacing this way. So I went ahead to place the fashion fabric on it and I went ahead to start stitching. So see me here doing the construction of the dart and afterward I did that of the front as well. And this is what we have. That already constructed on the back piece. Neckline already prepared. The balls that constructed and for the facing, I actually stitched down the hem to achieve neat finishing. So the next thing I did at this point was now to join the front and back piece together at the shoulder line. So I stitched, and with the help of the facing that I flipped over it, I was able to achieve neat finishing for the shoulder line this way. So having done that, this is what we have. So I went ahead to fold the center front to create a crease line and that's a guide for me to actually do my marking for where the ruffles will be placed on the bodies. So I marked the length and from the crease line I marked one inch away on the crease line on both sides this way and for the neck region I did half an inch around the neckline. So having done that the next line I did two inches spacing and while for the neck region, I did just an inch spacing from the initial marking this way. So this is what I have as my markings for where the ruffles will be placed. So for the ruffles, I started cutting out the two net fabric. I trimmed the self edge. I actually cut out one yard at first. So I trimmed the edge, put it on fold using the width of uh, about five inches. The ruffles are going to be in two layers. So this is the first layer, five inches by about 30 inches length this way. So having measured, I went ahead to cut. So for each line, I intend to join three strips of this length of 30 inches this way. You understand? So for the shorter length, I went ahead to put on fold about three and a half inches for the width, still with 30 inches length. So here's the five inches on it. I shall go ahead to place the three and a half inches this way and gather it together. Do you understand? So this is how I went ahead to cut all the strips like so this way, separating those of the three and a half inches and those of the five inches this way so i cut out as many as possible that will be enough so the next thing i did was to press each of these trees to get the crease line at the middle so the first one is the five inches width so this is the three and a half inches width so i'll go ahead to place on each other this way but at first i joined them in trees the width five three of it then the width three and a half three of it 
Then afterwards, I went to the sewing machines to run my loose gather stitches this week. You understand? So afterwards, now I went ahead to pull to dispose the fullness like so this way to the measurements to about the measurement that i have on the bodies so having gotten something close i went ahead now to place it on the garment itself so i had to first pin to ensure that i'm disposing the fullness evenly like so so once i'm sure that i've been able to distribute the fullness not that is much on one side and is scanty on the other side i made sure i dispose it evenly then i went ahead now to start stitching so in the same we haven't done this first one i went ahead to pin the other layer and i stitch so this is the first layer well arranged like so so having disposed it i went over the sewing machine to stitch i can see the marking for the second layer so when i'm done with this first one i'll come back now to place the second layer and likewise stitch down so see me here stitching the first layer down and you can see that i'm actually taking my time to remove the paint and to do the proper rearrangement before actually stitching down so having stitched around the first line this is what we have are you loving it already? So in the same way, I went ahead to dispose the other strip. Then following the markings that are already marked on the bodies, I went ahead to stitch on it the ruffles. Afterward, this is what we have. You can see that everything is evenly distributed. So afterwards, I went ahead to fold the hemline or the front piece. Remember that we had already done that of the back. And afterwards now, I went ahead to introduce front seam for the side seam, stitching to the right side and later to the wrong side. And this is what we have afterwards. So at this point, we are good to go to prepare our sleeve. So for the sleeve, I first folded into two to create crease line at the center line, upon which we shall be stitching our ruffles. And for this vent, I cut strip of fabric this way to finish it up using the piping method, just like I have done here. Can you see? Please ensure that this slit falls to the back arm, not the front. Remember, we notch the front arm at the arm hole. So your slit has to be at the back arm. Please, I forgot to say that initially. So having done that now, I went ahead now to place following my crease line at the center line to place the ruffles. And I took my time again to dispose carefully like so, making sure everything, I mean, is, the fullness is evenly arranged. So this is what we have afterwards, like so. These are the two sleeves prepared this way. So next thing will be to stitch at the sides in the sleeve. And for this, I also adopted the French seam method which gives me the next finishing so for the two sleeves this is what we are having so the next thing will be to go ahead to prepare the wrist curve and for this i'm going ahead to fuse interfacing on one side the dimension is eight by nine inches this way so i go ahead to prepare just like i would do for my shirt so having prepared i went ahead to stitch down to first trim the ruffles and stitch it down then afterwards i attach the wristband and our sleeve is ready to be attached to the bodies so attaching to the bodies we've got this and you can see me here flexing my ruffle top and i also made sure i went to the studio to give it that professional look if you have learned one or two things from this video, kindly give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. You are yet to subscribe to this beautiful channel. And we have a couple of online classes that you can put in for, for your fashion upgrade. Kindly contact me on my WhatsApp number for online classes. Do follow us on all our social media platforms on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, at So With La Perry. 
Until my next video, thank you for watching. Bye for now.